Welcome everybody to Astro Jew's YouTube channel. This is Mitch, and tonight I want to introduce you to a new um, imaging processing software. Uh, let me bring up the website right here. It's called Astro Pixel Processor by Mabula Haberkamp. He's the designer, um, maker of this incredible software, which we're going to cover tonight. The very the first part of um, of using Astro Pixel Processor, uh, which is doing all, uh, collecting all the lights, all the darks, all the bias frames, all the flats, and we're going to calibrate and register and normalize and integrate all these in one fell swoop. Everything. This is through a filter. Uh, who I want to give a shout out to is because the data will come not from me but from Diego Colonello, and this is his Astrobin um, page. So I encourage you to check out Diego's wonderful work. He lent us uh, the data tonight, which is M20, the Trifid Nebula. And if we go back to um, Mabula's website, Habercomp, uh, <clears throat> I guess the production is Aries, and they have this wonderful Astro Pixel processor software that does all kinds of powerful work I love this for SHO. Now, I've only had the, the software for 30 days. My trial, which is free, you can download it right here, free, 30 days, ran out. But uh, the gentleman was nice enough to um, extend it by a little bit because it was so cloudy. I, could, I didn't get that much data, so I had to borrow some from Diego. So let's have a look at Astro Pixel Processor, and let's see what this program can do if you're using, well, any type of equipment any type of camera, any type of telescope, LRGB, one-shot color, mono, uh, it doesn't matter. This program does it all. So let's start. So here's the interface, and there's tabs. One, two, so load. Two is calibrate. Three is analyze the stars. Four, you register or align all the stars. Five, you normalize intensities of each frame. And then at six, we in integrate them. And then there's other tools. But for tonight, let's see if we can put everything in one shot. Now, I don't usually do this in Pix Insight. It's all done in sections. It takes a couple hours. You know you have to do all, you have to calibrate everything, like all the reds, all the blues, and all the greens, if you're using filters. Uh, in some case, I don't because I use one shot color. But now I've started to do a little bit of narrow band. So, all right, let's start. So I'm going to choose multi-channel filter processing because that's what Diego supplied me with, his filters, red, green, blue. We also, he gave me some flats, some darks, some bias, and we're going to put them all in here. And at the bottom here, there's a console which shows you what's going on as we do it, which is kind of neat. Now, there's actually two of them. I, if I can bring the other one up. Here's the, this is what, this shows you what's happening. A little similar, similar to PixInsight. All right, let's load the frames. Lights. All right, so let's go to up one directory. Let's go to red and select the red subs. Now the program says, what color is this filter? What's the red filter? And there are lots of different selections here and we're not going to go through them. So we choose red because it's the red filter. That's it. Next, lights again because it's RGB. Let's go to green. Select one, select all open green channel check mark green okay lights for the third time because they are light frames up blue select all enter and what are they blue filter okay so we have 46 frames there they are loaded Okay, so now what do we need? We're also going to need some flats. So, add flats. Move up. One, two, three, and go to our flat frames. There they are. So, flats are what? The red. Select all red flat. That's for the red channel. So, what flats were they? Red. Okay. Takes a few seconds. Load those. My computer's not very fast flats again but this time for the green channel select all 
green flats and they are green channel flats. Go. One more time. This time we need for the blue filter the flats for the blue to remove all the motes in the vignette. Again, tell the software it's the blue filter for flats. There we go. A lot of files. Now let's add the darks. Go up a couple. Okay, so dark frames, darks. I believe they'll cover that'll cover for all the frames. Now I didn't know what you use here. I believe it's just you know it's luminance, right? It's a dark frame. I don't think it'll do anything wrong. If not, then uh, <laughs> I'll learn and we'll learn together. So I, I just put, um, you know, just luminance. Could be all channels, but I don't think it'll hurt. And I think bias would be the same. Again, I've only done this twice, but I want to show you the program. Bias files, same thing, up, up. There's his bias files, select all of them. And there's a lot of them. And again, I just select luminance. It says all channels, but perhaps it should have been left on all channels automatically. But I'm gonna try luminance since it's just a bias frame. It has no color. Could be all channels, I suppose, but this is this is RGB. A lot of bias frames. I believe there's a hundred. Very interesting program. I already love it to death, especially for SHO, which is sulfur, hydrogen, and alpha, hydrogen, alpha, oc, yes, hydrogen, alpha, HA, O3, and S2. Um, we'll talk about that a bit later, but for tonight, let's just see. Just amazing how we can look. So we have 46 lights of three colors, 49 flats, 20 darks, 100 bias files, and there's none of these. That'll be done automatically. You can sort by star density, background dispersion, signal to noise ratio, but we're not going to do any of that right now. We're just going to leave it as it is. And now that they're all loaded, what's step number two? Calibrate. So now there's a few few things you have to look at. Now again, I'm new at this, but I believe for me, when I'm doing darks and flats, I always, one second, I always use Sigma clipping. Some people use Windsorized, uh, especially if there's a lot, in fact, maybe Windsor Rise Windsor Clip would be better for the bias. Um, I don't create any rejection. Master Dark Flat, I don't, I didn't skip, I skipped over that. Um, master Dark will be average, it'll be Sigma Clip. And Master Flat will also be Sigma Clip. I put everything on Sigma, as some big observatories also do when they're uh, doing their rejection maps. Uh, don't have to create that. I'm not going to touch any of these. It's all by default. Everything's by default. And create 32-bit masters. Create master bias flats and darks. And calibrate. Give calibration warning, which sometimes it does. It's, I've done it twice and I did, but it was okay. You could keep going. So create masters and assign them to the light frames. Let's go. Just move this back over again. Okay. Now, I don't know how long this is going to take. I'm just going to pause. This could take five minutes. I'm just going to pause it, and I'll be right back as soon as it says that it's done. Okay, so be right back. Control, pause. Now I wanted to show you the console uh, <clears throat> window while I was pausing because this is going to take quite a while. Um, all the work that's going on in the background, if you want, you can stretch the window, and it's doing uh, all calibration. It's making all the master dark, master flat, master bias. It's going to apply them to each individual filters, red, green, and blue. And that's why it's going to take so long. Okay, so we're going to pause again, and we'll let it run. Okay, I'm back again for a few minutes. As you notice, I'm at 23%. But I want to point out at the top, st stack task will require... 3.1 gig of free hard disk space. So keep that in mind. If you're running a 500 gig or 250 gig, then you use up a lot. Um, just make sure there's enough room on the hard drive. These are a lot of files, and it's making um, working in this directory here, which I selected here, C temp app training. 
So if we go there and we go back to this, as you can see, I'll just move over a bit. It already made an MB file. It's a fits. It's the master bias. I believe the next file will be MD for master dark. See, it says dark luminance data here. And then eventually it'll make a master flat, so it'll be MF. Well, there you go. Speak of the file. So master dark, master bias, after be master flat. And we'll just let it run. Just wanted to show you that it's working in this directory, which I chose a little earlier, C temp app Triffid training. You should do that at the very, very beginning. Choose your calibration. task requires only 0.3 gig so I believe that's 300 meg my recording software is giving me a hard time now if you look at the top here on the left hand side um, there's RAM I, I think I have 12 gig um, sure I think it's using 1.6 gig here um, there's also processing uh, tasks going on here um, I believe APP is using 13% of the CPU I'm running a quad core uh, eight core yeah eight core um, and the HP 17 so lots of nice information up here you have uh, the hard drives 200 gig open GL uh, all bunch of little things that you can keep track as you're running uh, as this is doing its job okay critical warning flat fielding calibration cannot be performed correctly I'm gonna let it go maybe something that I did I ran this before through it and it went really really well so I'm, I'm learning. Uh, there's videos you can watch on the website. Let's go there for a second. Um, there's presentations, there's video tutorials. If I click on that, I'll just scroll. Wow. Um, wow, Astro Pixel Processor's doing its job. Of course, I'm using up a lot of CPU time. So, uh, Mabula has all kinds of videos here. The introduction, calibration, register, normalization, integration. Then um, there's also for mosaic, huge mosaics. Uh, gradient light pollution correction, background calibration. Finally, you're going to correct the star color, what we call color calibration. Selective coloring. And final, finally, you can stretch and preview. And there's filters for that. So all kinds of things. You can correct vignette at the very end if there's some, because your flats didn't work out properly. There's also a calibration uh, workflow for DSLRs. It goes on and on and on all kinds of uh, really good information videos step by step from Mabula all right and don't forget Diego check out his Astrobin page let's continue here 75 percent hope I'm recording this and I'm not on pause I think we're okay let's see if I can uh, for some reason, my keys aren't working tonight. See if I can pause this again and let it run some more. Okay, it's done. So that was calibration. Step two. Step. Before we go to step two, we're just going to raise this up and scroll down. Notice at the bottom here it says master flat for red master flat green and master flat blue there's also one master dark for all frames and there's a master bias for all frames and these have been created here in the folder remember I was mentioning master flat all all three colors see the blue the green and the red that's just that's incredible now this software is doing everything for you let's keep going minimize bring back the console down now, calibrate. So, wait. calibrate. All right. Okay, we did calibration. Good. Step three. Just because I was reviewing the calibration files down here, I got uh, uh, just lost my thought for a second. 
So we're now going to analyze all the stars in each frame. And this part is also amazing. We're going to end up, I believe, with star, number of stars, star density, the background dispersion, signal to noise ratio, full wave half maximum on the fly, quality score. And it just goes on and on and on all um, at one time. Are we ready? Let's analyze the stars. Yes, I understand that. I made uh, it's just a little boo-boo that I made somewhere, but I'm sure it can still do its job. Again. You know my channel, Absolute Beginners, whether it's Pix Insight or anything else, or the Hypercam, or Signature Generator Pro, Sharp Cap, it doesn't matter. This time today, tonight, we're trying something new, Astro Pixel Processor version 1.067 by Aries Production. So this is going to take, hmm, it's going fairly fast this time, we're almost at 20%. I'm going to let it run. Um, and just keep talking a little bit. So we're gonna at it's it's going to analyze all the stars in all the frames. And once I get more used to the program, um, we can run through more and more and more uh, data. I can break it down some more. We can get some final results and see uh, where this program can take you. For tonight, it was just a matter of loading everything in their appropriate filters because this is obviously taken with a mono camera without luminance i don't have the luminance but it was rgb and uh, me it's just how everything can be done at once you know we don't have 12 hours sometimes we come home from work last night we did an imaging session we might got all, all the reds the night before all the greens then we got all the blues and all the bias and the darks and the flats and all of a sudden now we have to put all this together. I mean, here you load it, go for coffee, go for a tea. You can drink beer, go for a beer. And this does everything. Now, even on the fly here, look what this is finding some stars that are full width, half maximum 2.8. Uh, there's I saw some 3.4. Also, there's uh, 563. Those are all a bunch of scores, 616. Of course, the higher the score, the better also saw uh, things flying by a minute ago. I believe it was 300 stars or number of stars, 717. The higher the number of stars, the darker the background, the cleaner the image, and the better the score. This is how I understand it. So you got 695 stars, you have a score of, uh, um, <clears throat> let's say 485. The next one's 616. You'd think the higher the score, the better. This does it all in one run. So, and I don't want to compare software here. This was not the video for that. I'm not going to say, well, PixInsight does it a certain way and Astro Pixel Processor does it a different way. And that's true, and why not? All programs um, do certain things really, really good. Now, okay, maybe, okay, that was Analyze Stars, right? Okay. Now that step three is done, let's see if we can go to register all files. First, let's have a look. Again, I left everything in default. Now, for some reason, and my is probably gonna watch this and say, you forgot to do this and you forgot to do that and look at your stars aren't showing down here and they were the last time I did it. And if you want to set a reference star, you would have to see um, the information down below. But for some reason, it's not coming up right now. Um, so if I say yes, in order to say yes, let me just scroll back. Okay, just a second. Okay, there should be a lot more stars here. There they are. So let's scroll over again. Remember I was at the bottom? So, again, I'm brand new to this, so there's a lot of guessing. I just wanted to show you the software, what it could do. But the one that's the darker color, um, it has 776 star density. It has a full width half maximum of 3.03, .03, and the quality is 642. So let's just go down a bit and leave that showing so you can see it. Now, set reference frame. Do you want to? Let's have a look. 
Do you manually want to select the reference frame for the registrations of all frames? Click on yes and select the frame in the file. Well, I would certainly choose 3.03 if I was using my subframe sub sub hmm, sub selection. And of course, uh, there's there's one here. It's even lower, 786 with 293. But for some, you know, it depends. I it was is this was chosen with the software. So if I say yes, and I click on it, the reference frame has been adjusted, and it is the one that it suggested. You see REF. So that's done. So now that we've back for a second okay okay um, we've loaded them we calibrated them we analyzed the stars let's stack them and of course reference has been set just have to scroll down start registration it's not that hard. You just have to get used to where the buttons are. I'm so used to another program that, um, I mean, they're easy to see. You just have to look at them. Just look at the slide on the right or on the left. Just go through the menu and go next, next, next. You do this three times, you'll do it without thinking or do like I do, take notes. Again, this is not a video on precision or perfection. Like I said, the owner of the software will probably have a giggle at me trying my best. But hey, first, second time, the video was not for instructions. It's not really for training. It's a trial that I'm trying out. And since I've never done this and I've never really seen this except twice, uh, it, it's not that difficult. Um, let me just check the console here. Updated successfully. Um, looks like looks like all the registration is done. If that's true, that was awful quick. And there's a way to tell, I believe, when I was watching him do this on um, AIC on Adam's uh, website. Web, yeah, they, they do live broadcasts on Sunday night. The Astro Imaging Channel with Adam, I forget his last name. Him, he's there. Alex is there. Ron's there. Actually, this is where I found out that this program existed through that. So, um, so here we have uh, CA for calibrated star. Uh, the stars have been analyzed. They've been registered. See CA star reg. It it gives you a list of what it's done. So after registration, normally, let's normalize intensity of all the files. Again, I'm, I'm not touching any of these. These are per, per default. So let's normalize the intensities of all files. So here we go. Not sure how long that's going to take. Man, registration went really fast. I know it's 12 gig of RAM and 8 core, um, but that was quick. Let's see if the um, normalization of all the frames will take just so long. Now I believe this is acting or doing uh, something that Nebulosity was that it was doing when I used it. Nebulosity three two three four is that it normalizes uh, the images from background. Now sometimes there's gradients, sometimes there's haze, sometimes there's some kind of incoming light from somewhere else. The sky is never the same, especially over three four nights or a whole week, like I did uh, a couple of weeks ago. So this is great to be able to use a parameter that's going to uh, maybe it's matching histograms or maybe it's just normalizing intensities of each frame so that they're all equal it would almost be like a back, uh, background extraction like a dynamic background extraction to remove um, not not light pollution or anything like that but just normalizing intensity of each frame if I understand it correctly and again I'm guessing I haven't read the whole PDF and I've only watched one video but again I want to introduce this to my viewers you might say, this is really cool. I want to try it out. If you do, well, go here, Astro Pixel Processor. Check it out. Download the free trial. Try it. Enjoy it. Have fun. And please, give me some feedback. Tell me what you think of uh, the APP processing software that we're using tonight. So let it go. I'm going to pause again. This is 27%. Let me take another 
three four minutes i don't want to use i don't want this video to be an hour and a half so i'll be right back okay normalization is done next step is to integrate all frames let's look multi-channel integrate per channel lights to stack 100 percent 46 of 46 the weights i'm not touching now of course if you start playing with this you can change the integration i suppose by these qualities either by signal to noise ratio by the quality of the frames but for now of course all, we always use average when we're stacking integrating full mode again you have to know what this means there's different degrees of lnc i read a bit about it but not enough same with the mbb um, this multi-band blending you'll have to read more about it to find out outliers I like to do always there's a lot of frames here but I use Sigma clipping it always seems to work good I'm not sure there's other choices we're not gonna drizzle and we don't have to create the rejection maps for outliers later on for tonight it's okay we're just trying to run through this kernel I'm not touching the drizzle I'm not touching again these can be explained much better in the videos from Mabula's website and integrate all frames simple straightforward just let's just go forward and see what we get at the very very end for an image of the triffid based on all the filters and all <clears throat> bias dark flats frames should be okay again i'm going to pause just to make things a little bit faster seven percent i'll be right back while this is running i want to mention something look at the top integrating task requires this and this and this a free heart brace and if you look down here it says integrate integrating light frames loading frames of the integration red after it goes 15 to 15 this will probably switch to green and then blue so it's telling you what it's doing here also if you click here and watch the console integrating pixels of whatever total frame 15 to 15 uh, and if you if you follow along here it says red these are all red and now I believe we're going to switch over it says task complete man this is incredibly fast software um, just minimize the console look over here and we see loading frames of integration green so R done okay that was the integration so <clears throat> As far as I know, <coughs> excuse me, got something in my throat. <coughs> excuse me. Um, at this point, we <coughs> excuse me. We have all three files um, down at the bottom here. It says integrated red and green and blue. Let's. For the heck of it let's double click the red frame bring this down a bit and i'll scroll back down so i can see the other two filters okay so here's your red channel very nice zoom in a bit registration is very nice stars are all on top of each other okay by the way you right click it comes out and you left click it goes in for those who are <clears throat> would know how how do I stretch I mean how do I zoom in zoom out so click forward click back and there it is One more. okay that is the red let's go down click on green double click and here comes the green channel and you see the blue bar that's the progress bar for loading the green channel Hopefully my computer doesn't freeze. There's a green channel. Wow. What a difference, eh, in the amount of light that comes through the filters. Green channel. Back, 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 back. Now blue. You see down here blue? Double click the blue channel. Watch the progress bar at the top. Include the blue channel. It's a pretty big file. Not sure how many megs it is, I believe. If I scroll over. Mm -mm -mm. 63 meg 
I love this console. Everything's written there. You can just glance. So there's the blue. All right. So I'm no professional at this. I've only done it twice. But you would think that we can go right to step nine and combine R, G, and B. Let's try it. Remember, this was just a test to throw all the filters in and all the calibration files and see what would come out. Well, we got three beautiful RGB files of Diego's Triffid. Let me attempt to combine all three. So let's add one file. So we'll have to go back a directory or two. Okay, hopefully I'm in the right directory. D. Okay. Hopefully it's here somewhere. Um, so I believe this would be the red. Let's just, you know, I'm going to try it. I think this is the right one. Please wait. Okay. It's asking me what filter is this? Red. And it auto detected it. So I'll go, okay. And now add. And of course, I'll bring this down a bit again. Let's check. It's always RGBA. Eh? So green. So select green. It says green. We're okay. Let's add one more. Of course, like the last one is. Again, I have to stretch this. Um, blue. RGB. Loads. So we have blue. Okay. And if we scroll down here on the left, all these sliders can mix RGB. In other in other instances, it can mix LRGB. And what I tested two weeks ago, it mixed hydrogen alpha with sulfur and oxygen. Or if you're doing the Hubble palette, this would have been sulfur in red. HA in green and O3 in blue with a, oh, a million different ways you can mix that with sliders without having to use a script but by sliding and mixing percentages which is just amazing all right so I loaded RGB let's calculate creating a temporary RGB file wow look at that Amazing. Okay. So that, more or less, um, is the process of getting to this point with all the lights, all the darks, all the flats, and all the bias files. You now have a beautiful image that you can further process, but this time, instead of using the left side of the console, you'll be using the right-hand side with uh, the black point, the white, you have midpoints if you want to increase and darken it. There's so much stuff here that I need to learn. Saturation, automatic, there's new background neutralization, uh, and then there's digital processing where you can use even more of these sliders for sharpening. Uh, there's contrast. Uh, wow, it just it, it doesn't end. This particular video was only to introduce you to the software to see the interface, to watch this amazing process of loading everything off your filter wheel in one fell swoop. Now I'm just going to hit create here and uh, it's going to create the combined RGB image. I'm just going to put a M in front so that I know what it is and I'm going to say OK. All right. And I think I can close this now. From here, whatever happens from now on, in the next few minutes, it's all really uh, winging it. I'm just going to cancel this now. Okay, so I'm going to go back to, um, and again, there's things you can do here. For example, at this point now, you could correct vignette, remove light pollution, calibrate the background, and calibrate the star color. Again, let's go back to the console, and I, the last star should be, sorry but the last entry will be my M combined RGB image so you don't have to you don't have to be chasing in here looking all over the place because Mabula put all the referencing all the work 
all the items, all the uh, the stuff, everything is here in the console, which is just amazing. I mean, you can click on any of these and it'll bring it up for you. All right, so let's do it before we just finish up. So I'm going to choose my M RGB combination. It should open it up. Remember, I'm just learning here. Hopefully it opens it up. Okay, there it is. Now, I get, what did I say about this point? I'm not going to do a full process in here because I really don't have enough experience. But to me, um, from just what I did the other day, just, you know, just trying things out, um, normally you would remove light pollution. But I don't see really any light pollution here. But we could calibrate the background, and I'm probably going to do it wrong, and Babula's going to send me an email saying, what have you done? But it, I think if you want to calibrate the background, we may have to select certain sections. And it's pretty good because he puts so much information. And here's what I mean by that. So the image is loaded. Please make at least four area select boxes. So for what? Well, the background. So here's one box. We'll put one here one of the background there seems to be um, and then some smaller ones here so just try to get the back and it, when it sees background like don't go near the nebula just stay on the background all right so eight areas selected so I want it to calculate the background see if it can calibrate it to neutralize it so it's not so yellow or so blue or green so give it a few seconds All right, so I wasn't watching the histogram, but I believe that was done. I'm just going to go OK and save and just overwrite that file. It's a fits. Yes. OK. OK, it's done. <clears throat> now, as far as uh, removing light pollution on the areas or calibrating star color, I am not. I don't have any experience in that. Calibrate star color. I think again you get to select boxes, create boxes around the stars, and it will actually automatically collect the RG neutralize the color so the stars won't be all blue or all red or all yellow or orange or green. So I'm gonna try it. But after that, this video is pretty well finished because it wasn't about processing. I wanted to show you the interface. So calibrating star color, please make at least one area, select boxes. So if you're going to calibrate stars, you're going to want to see some stars in there. So I guess I'm going to put some again. Hopefully I don't get a big long letter saying you did it all wrong. But I do encourage you to go to the website and watch his videos. He is so good at explaining. So let's calculate now the star calibration. If you want to call it that. Hopefully I got enough boxes. And again, it's always talking here. It's always uh, producing some re re results and reports on what you can do, should do, and it tries to help you. This box is movable, by the way, for those who don't who want to move it out of the way. So, wow, it did a representation chart graph of the stars. Now, in blue, 886 have been calibrated. Star population is 949 in yellow. That's a lot of stars back there. And black body model is, I believe, in the green, the green line, is the actual calibration of stars that we do in other programs like photometric calculations. Or in his case, adaptive black body and extinction. So there are so many things here. There are star rejections. You can choose to adjust the colors individual stars. There's green, there's slope, there's contrast, magenta. There's all kinds of things here that can be fixed, repaired, if you know, if you have more experience with this. So I'm going to go OK and save that file because I believe I calculated it and it gave me that report. <clears throat> so still, I'm still going to overwrite. Actually, you know, you know Actually, I'm going to put a 2 in front of that so we get a second file, not the same as the first. There we go. OK, it's a fits. <clears throat> there. So again, here I am. I uh, don't have enough experience to do any more processing. I suppose I could play with the you know, real quickly, maybe do a little bit of um, midpoint and brighten up the nebula. But I, I don't want to ruin this when somebody has already created some really good, there, this is what I meant, uh, some really good tutorials out there on video. 
Sarah Wager, Wager, I don't know how to say it. She's got a bunch of videos, and she's really good. Look her up on YouTube. And okay, so I just put it back to where it was because I don't know how to use the right hand side of the of the saturation. So that's it. You know what? I'm gonna stop there. Um, if I minimize this, or I can leave it open. If I go here, and I go to my file, hopefully it's in here somewhere. So yeah. M for Mitch. So we have combine, combine, combine. Let's just go with uh, the second, first one. Hopefully, Earthen View can open that. It's a pretty big file. Okay, so it's in a non-stretched. It's in a non stretch It's linear. What I'm, what I'm probably have to do here is, if this is what I would like to have, you have to save it, because it's always, always, always linear. Mabula said, which is good. You're always constantly working on a linear file. I guess you could change, you could save it at any particular stage, but let's just go save. Hope this, hope I'm doing this right. If not, I will be corrected. So again, this is ST, this one is gonna be three. Okay, but this time I'm gonna drop it to a TIFF. It's probably 16 bit. I'm gonna leave this default, sRGB. And of course the integers are 16 bit. Okay, and saving. Mitch combined RGB ST3, I believe. Okay, let's go try this again. So there's the TIFF file. All the work that's been done, the master bias, the master dark, all three master flats, RGB, my combinations attempts, and of course, let's open up this one here. So there it is. That is amazing. With a little experience, a little training, a little video, all of these dark lanes will come out. This will be super bright. The background will be adjusted. Light pollution will be removed. And you can even crop. Now, I'm going to just close this for a second. Go back to... Uh, <laughs> let me just look before I close this for tonight. Go to the training for a second. Um, I can't remember where I put the... Where I put the... Uh, the my tests... I think it was, it might have been here, probably not. No, wrong, wrong folder. Um, ah, right here. So I did some the other day. I did some the other day. I got a whole whack of them here. Um, here's one called off the press, but those are all fits. So here's what I got experimenting a bit on the right hand side. They're brighter, the colors are more saturated, the lanes are coming out a bit more. I'll go next. Uh, these are pretty big files, they're 50 meg. There's another one that I attempted to do uh, a bit of background calibration. The star color is really, really nice. Um, I'll keep going through them. These are all 1200. This one is 94 meg much brighter but the background could have been darkened a bit it's probably background uh <clears throat> background what do you call it subtraction neutralization another 47 meg it's a very very nice data by the way that diego supplied so 12 of 12 so that's it that's that's what i have um if somebody wanted to they could bring this into another program and do some extra work um extra work on it um, and it'd be great here's uh, Diego's actual M20 by Mabula and you can tell look what he's done eh? isn't this background's really nice all the uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the maybe there was a bit of light pollution they look at the light yellow I guess brown is gone uh, the noise is down this is really really sharp I can even hit the plus sign here uh, look at the nebula and um, the blue and the pink is really natural. I mean, look at the look at the flux way up here in the, the darker areas right here. Well captured, good contrast. I'll bring this back down. And I am done for tonight. I hope you enjoyed this. This was not a training session. It was not a lesson in anything. It was an introduction to AstroPixel Processor from... This company, Aries Production, which is, I believe, it's Mebula's own business. And he has a lot of videos here. I'm just going to click on one without running it. Please go check out the website and have a look. And it's amazing what this program can do. 
He'll go through the full introduction, calibration, registration, normalization, integration, everything. Color, star saturation, background, it's all there. Calibrating the background, removing light pollution. He There's videos here on mosaic. I mean, huge mosaics, like 16 panes. And they're all twisted. And the cameras have all been in different orientation. And guess what? The program straightens them all out evenly. Um, as you can see in this image here, light pollution correction, star color correction, selective coloring, everything within one program. And here's the final result. Just incredibly crazy. Uh, look at that, eh? And anybody can do this with a little bit of practice. Uh, let's go back a bit. Uh, the other thing I wanted to see that, that I found just incredible, and I don't think it's in this section here, but, and I wanted to mention this before, and it can be done in another program, but just imagine this. You have... Um, you have a camera, let's say it's your Hypercam, because I talk to a lot of guys with the Altair Astro or whatever camera you have, and you're shooting your four inch refractor, but you just happen to have two or three telescopes, and so you shoot it through your four inch refractor, then you shoot it through your eight inch Newtonian, then you take out your six Rich Secreti RC6, and it's always the same target. Let's say you're always shooting whatever it is, uh, the Rosetta, all different scopes, all different image scales, all different camera angles, and AstroPixel processor will take all of them, straighten them out, YX, put them all over top, registrate them all, normalize them all, put them all together, it'll resize, rescale, and at the end you'll have one image of all these telescopes in one. Now, for that matter, it might be your friend in Brazil, Jack, and then you have George in the United States in Georgia, then there's John up in British Columbia, and then there's Harry in Britain, and all these people are shooting the same target with different telescopes and different cameras, and they all combine into one final image. I've seen it done. This program can do it. Um, oh, we can take it further. Some of them were binning one by one. Others were binning two by two. Others were doing luminance, and they were doing uh, SHO. Others were doing RGB. Doesn't matter. <clears throat> this program can handle all of this simultaneously, once you get the hang of it. I'll leave you with that. There we go. There's the website right here. And um, <clears throat> there's Diego's thank you, sir, for this wonderful Triffid Nebula that you gave us to enjoy and to do the test on. Here it is. I didn't do anything to this yet. This is as is besides a little bit of the background calibration, maybe the calibration of star color, but I mean, I didn't do anything. So I hope you really enjoyed this. Please leave some comments, subscribe, hit the little bell for more, tell all your friends. Uh, and let's just keep this little, um, um, I shouldn't say little, let's just keep this program uh, going. And I'm going to try to do more videos on it and just diversify a little bit. <clears throat> so we can do, like you may use, remember I'm teaching PixInsight, but you may use PixInsight to do a lot of the things and then jump into here just to do uh, sulfur, hydrogen, and oxygen because it has such an amazing tool uh, when you're doing either selective or RGB combination with different filters. And I saw that earlier. Uh, the tools are amazing. They're all here. So there you go. Hubble palette all possible and variations by the hundreds by just sliding percentages of the sliders from red green blue and uh, hopefully later on when i have more experience um i'm definitely getting this program because it's i'm going to use more than one you know how people use pics inside in photoshop well i might end up using app and pics inside and photoshop um, as i pull images off sgp apt and sharp cap okay this was fun. Hope you enjoyed it. I made a thousand mistakes. Sometimes I was not sure where I was going. Hey, nobody's perfect. It's my second time. I could have played with this 20, 30 times and then made a perfect video. But it wasn't my point tonight. It was just to introduce to you the program, the owner, and the person credited for the beautiful Triffid, Diego. Uh, I think it's Conolato. Or Conolet. Hmm, have a hard time with his last name. Colonello. Something like that. Thanks, guys. Don't forget to uh, subscribe leave some comments below uh, go visit the light the site yeah the light too you know starlight the website and i will uh, catch you later i have more videos coming yes there's going to be finally somebody's been asking me about some uh, filters and some narrow band that's coming uh i got a, I, i've been off for two three months but i have 
some goodies and some treats and I'll make up those videos again it's back to PixInsight again and these uh, Astro Pixel processing um, the software that I'm working on now practicing on they'll they'll come they'll come more and more this fall as I get better and better we'll run through it and if you have questions I'll try to answer them uh, but the best thing is go right to Mabula's website and download the tutorials and try this free trial 30 days full version and he's got so many new things in corp that's going to be coming I believe there's going to be some masking coming there may be some noise reduction coming it might even be here now I'm not familiar with it uh, but he's got all he's working on this 24 7 thanks guys see you later bye bye